welcome to another video. If you happen to have the chance to look at a puppy litter in person, you might be wondering how to pick your puppy from that litter. I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can sort of test the puppies out and what information you can gather from these kinds of little tests. Essentially, you're going to be meeting puppies for the first time. They're not going to know you and so they are going to feel a little bit nervous and we want to see them when they're feeling a little bit out of their comfort zone. So it is really ideal to take a puppy, have it put down in front of you by itself. It should not be with its litter mates because that will leave the puppy feeling a little bit more vulnerable. You really want to see what is this puppy like when it's a little bit nervous, when it's a little bit stressed out, or how stressed out is it going to get? Does this puppy relax or does this puppy stay way stressed out the whole time? And that's going to give you a really good idea of what kind of puppies you're looking at. And of course, what to expect really does depend on the breed of dog and the age. What is good, what the good outcome is, is totally dependent on what you are looking for. So because my puppies know me, I can't exactly put them in a nervous state. So I can't really show you that and I wanted to be able to show you that. So what I did was I took my puppies to the only place in my house that they have never been, which is on top of my bed. So I brought them up on the bed. I don't bring them up here because it's a big fall and puppies um, often will fall right off the edge of things. So I don't recommend doing this. I'm not telling you to do this. You do this on the floor. I'm just telling you that the reason that I'm doing it up on my bed is because it is a weird surface. It's not flat and solid. They've never been on it before. So this is going to give them that stressed out, imbalanced, I don't know what's going on kind of experience. I put on, you know, the fans and all the lights and the camera, and that is going to create the, um, the atmosphere of some nerves. And that way you're going to see the puppies feeling a little bit nervous, a little bit off balance, and you're going to be able to get that with the puppies that you're going to see um, in person because they've never met you before. So it is very important that when you do do this, when you do this with the litter of puppies that you're evaluating, that you are alone in the room or it's just you and whoever you brought with you because you really want the puppy to focus on you. You want to see how the puppy reacts to you. Also, it's helpful if you can go into a room where the puppy can't take off and hide on you. One last thing before I start showing you these exercises, don't be alarmed if you're not given the opportunity to meet a litter of puppies and look at them for yourself. I mean, first we're in COVID uh, pandemic lockdown, so there's probably not a lot of people letting anyone into their home right now um, but also, there is a real legitimate danger allowing strangers into your home to handle your puppies. Every time the breeder has someone into their home, they're putting the puppies at risk for disease. And so if there are people that are litter hopping, they're going from litter to litter, or they're going to pet stores, they're going to the shelter, they could be carrying a disease. Completely, they won't know it, but it happens, and it happens a lot. And so there are many, many breeders that will not allow people in their home to handle the puppies because there's too much of a risk to the health of the puppies, and that has to be, that has to be kept the priority. That said, there are some breeders that take that risk because it's such a nice experience for people to come and pick a puppy out. I completely understand that too. I've always been very torn on this issue because it's so nice to be able to go in and handle the puppies. I think the best thing that you could do, the best compromise would be to have a breeder or whoever is raising the litter, if it's a foster, evaluate the puppies themselves. And then if you have a good relationship with that person, you can trust them and you're going to get a nice temperament evaluation done by a professional and you'll know what to expect with each puppy. And of course, remember that inborn and genetic temperament and then of course whatever the puppy has learned that is only going to make up a small percentage of who your puppy grows up to be there is a very large part of that is going to be you and how you raise the puppy but there are most definitely are some genetic um, components to temperament that won't change no matter what you do so it's valuable to look at but also doesn't necessarily determine exactly what that puppy is going to be all of this depends on the state of the puppies when you see them. 
if you see the puppies and it's nap time, you're going to get a different result than if you see the puppies and it's food time and they're hungry, right? And um, if the puppies have just had a shot, then they're going to be all discombobulated. If the puppies are not being raised well, maybe they aren't being treated well, maybe they aren't properly um, socialized at all and so they're excessively fearful. There's so many variables in here that you're going to have to weigh all of those things in. But if everything is perfect, you have this great person that you're going over to see and you know that they've been doing a great job with the puppies and the puppies have just woken up from their naps and they're, they're fed and they're all ready to go, then you're going to have the perfect setting. You're going to get individual puppy. The very first thing that you are going to do is introduce yourself to the puppy. You're going to get your body nice and low to the ground so that you are as non-scary as possible. So I recommend sit down on your on your bottom, crisscross your legs like a kid in kindergarten, or you can crouch way down and put your upper body down on the ground and just put your face. It depends on how big the puppy is. You know, golden retriever, you could just kneel. Uh, very tiny puppy, you probably want to put your face down low and wait for the puppy to come to you. Do not go to the puppy. And let's see how the puppy responds. Does the puppy come to you? Does the puppy turn around and run? All of that does depend on how nervous the puppy is and also how much this particular puppy is human oriented. So in most circumstances, you will be looking for a people oriented puppy. The puppy might shiver a little bit because they're excited or a little bit nervous, but it doesn't mean that they are fearful necessarily. Look at the tail and the carriage. If the puppy's tail is tucked all the way under and they're crouched up, that's generally not going to be the type of puppy that you're going to want for, say, a family dog. Overall, in general, for your average puppy um, buyer, average puppy adopter, you're going to be looking for a puppy that moves in your general direction. They don't have to get all the way over to you, but they should at least move sort of towards you in the general direction of you. Tail should be at least mid, just kind of hanging there, not tucked up underneath, just hanging, maybe a few tail wags when the puppy acknowledges that you're talking to it. And it might look around a little bit and then eventually, hopefully, wind up in front of you saying hello, maybe giving you some kisses, something like that. So I'm going to show you now on six different puppies the different responses that I got when I did this. So first puppy is Bella. You can see her tail is up. It's nice and high. She's happy. She stumbles a little bit. You can tell walking on the bed is a little bit strange, but she does walk towards me. She gets pretty close to me, but then she does turn around and walk the other way. <laughs> she she nopes out and leaves. And this is not a puppy that's too fearful, but it's definitely a puppy that's showing caution. Caution is not a bad thing. You can kind of decide where you're looking for your puppy to ideally be in the range of super brave and bold versus cautious and careful. So now we have Cupid. You can see that she is not at all happy about being on this uneven wobbly surface. She pretty much decides she's not going to move. <laughs> she just sat there before I put my hand out and kind of encouraged her to give walking on the bed a try. So she did reach for my hand and she gave me some kisses and she moved towards me. So again, you're seeing uh, tail is up. She doesn't seem to be terrified, but she's definitely being cautious. She's not quite sure about all of this and she is happy to see me. And now that was Casanova. He is very different from his sister, as you can see right away. His tail is immediately going crazy. He doesn't mind wobbling and falling and will, in fact, just run to me even if he's tripping over himself. So very little caution, caution to the wind. He's all passion, all about getting to people. He's the lap puppy. He loves people. So you can see him come straight to me, start covering me with kisses quite enthusiastically and that tail is just gonna wag so fast you can barely see it. So you can see quite a difference between him and his sisters. His sisters are a little more cautious, they think through things a little bit more before they do it. 
for example, they're less likely to fall off the edge of a bed, whereas if Casanova were to see me walking across the room, he would run at me and not pay attention to what was between us and would be the type of puppy that would in fact tumble right off the bed. So now we have the bigger puppies. Now you'll notice that the larger puppies are more cautious while walking on the bed than the smaller puppies, and that's simply because taller, so they have a little longer way to fall if they trip. So they are actually more cautious when they are moving across uneven surfaces. Little bitty tiny puppies have a very low center of balance, and so it's not that far to fall, I guess. <laughs> So you're going to see Valentine here. He is a very people-oriented puppy. He is very affectionate, but he definitely does not like being up on the bed. You can see that he's very nervous. He stretches himself over because he does want to see me, uh, but he doesn't want to walk. And after a few seconds, you can see that he does actually shake himself off and his tail starts wagging. So that shake that you see is a sign of stress release. Now we've got Chai. You can see he's a little less nervous than Valentine. He is standing up on his legs and he does start walking, but he starts walking to go right behind me because he's going to try to hide. <laughs> um, he does actually kind of like tucking himself between people and things or his siblings. So that is what he was trying to do, but I didn't let him. Pulled him out and I tried to entice him to play, but he wasn't quite there yet. He wanted to kind of look around. He did see one of the kids in the room, which is why he walked towards the camera. He was actually looking at one of the kids. But you can see that he's not freaked out. He's definitely being cautious. And then he comes over and does give me some kisses. And now we have our most concerned puppy of the group. This is Truffle, and she's probably the least um, athletic of all of the puppies. <laughs> so she's. She's a little chubby puppy and she's a little more wobbly, so you can definitely see that she's not super happy about the bed. But again, no tail tucked. Her tail is casual. She does wag it at me, so she's not really trying to do much. But she does show affection to me and start moving. Now, in order to keep these videos short, um, I didn't want to just throw a one hour long video at you guys. So I just tried to break it up into 10, 15 minute chunks so that it would be a little more convenient. Uh, that is the end of this video. And then the next video, I will show you the next two, I think, things that you're going to do. So, uh, bye.